Self-driving cars hit the streets. Oculus Rift is Windows only. And would you buy an Iron Man phone? Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 339 for Friday, May 15th, 2015. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Dropbox for Business. Dropbox for Business lets your team sync and share files just like Dropbox. Your employees probably already use Dropbox, so don't waste your time trying to find a different solution. Visit dropbox.com slash twit for a free 14-day trial. That's dropbox.com slash twit. Welcome, I am Megan Maroney. Now let's get to today's big news. Chris Urmson, director of Google's self-driving car division, announced today that a fleet of autonomous prototype vehicles are ready for the road. This summer, they will be let loose on the streets of Mountain View with Google's safety drivers aboard, just in case things go all maximum overdrive. Joining us today to talk about this and another story is Roberto Baldwin from Engadget. Welcome, Roberto. Hello. So Ermson says the cars have had lots of experience already in testing facilities, driving at least 10,000 miles a week, which he says is the equivalent of about 75 years of typical American adult driving experience. Do you think this means that the cars will drive like the your average 75-year-old? Oh, I should hope not. Probably more like a trucker, because I think truckers drive that many miles a week. Uh, the, I, you know, the cars are going from, you know, they're, they're like that kid with a learner's permit right now. You can't really drive anywhere without your parents in the car, like yanking the wheel away from you or, 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 or stomping their foot at nothing when you, when you, when you don't stop too quickly. That's, that's where their cars will be at when, when they bring them on the streets this summer. Right. So, of course, they've been testing the Lexus SUVs, but these cars, we're looking at them now. They're very small. They look like a toy a little bit. Um, what, are you excited about this? I actually am. I like the little panda cars. And um, as someone who loves driving, I grew up driving in, in, in mountain towns on mountain roads with curves and drifting and just doing a bunch of incredibly uh, unsafe stuff. Uh, you know, the average driver doesn't really care that much about cars in general. It's a utility. You know, they just want something to get them you know, from point A to point B. And if this is going to, to allow them to do that, and they can still check Facebook, they can still check, tw check uh, Twitter, do whatever they, they do in the morning, or read a book, um, and it reduces traffic, then I'm, I'm all for it. Right, and presumably it will also reduce accidents, make the roads safer. Um, you know, we are, so we're not checking and driving, of course. Um, yeah. So, yeah, there's all so sorts of good reasons. Um, I, I, this afternoon, I went to the grocery store next door, and I used my Apple Watch to pay, and the checker just completely freaked out. So I just wonder if the average person is going to do the same thing when they see these autonomous cars on the road. I think we're going to see, you know, when the first, uh, you know, those, those Lexuses first hit the road, you, you, you see a lot of pictures of them on uh, social media. But now, you know, especially in California and the Bay Area, people aren't taking photos of them and putting their lives in danger so they can get a photo to put up on Twitter. Um, so, you know, when, you know, when initially when these the little panda cars uh, hit the road, we're going to see a lot of pictures, you know, on Twitter and Facebook. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's kind of, you know, it's going to go away and people are going to get used to it. And I would say once, you know, it starts hitting middle America, uh, smaller towns, um, then we're, we're, people just won't care. It'll just be something we're used to. Right. I mean, I think that, you know, Google has said, like, the technology is there. They know it works. They're really, they're just sending them out there to test people and see how they feel about them, I think. So. Yeah, you know, it's, 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 it's always a little uh, disconcerting when you're thinking, oh, there's going to be a robot that's going to be in charge of not running down pedestrians. Right. Um, and if we've learned anything from the Terminator series is that robots can't be trusted. Um, so, you know, we're, it, it, it's going to be a little while, you know, you have to get the public behind you, but you also have to get the legislators behind you and you have to worry about, you know, the lobbyists for the auto group. And I'm sure there's lobbyists for the insurance companies who are, you know, if once these cars are, are doing, you know, fewer accidents, I mean, how much is your insurance going to be? Ten bucks a month? Right. I mean, that's what we heard a little bit this week. I mean, they were Google was sort of pressured a little bit to come out with the statistics of how many accidents there were. And, you know, they were saying like, there, well, there were this many, which is much fewer than what the average car has. Uh, but then when someone else did the statistics, they said, well, the percentages, you know, of fender benders are actually higher with these, you know, autonomous vehicles. But then there's the issue of, well, most people don't even report fender benders. So there's a lot, you know, it's going to be a lot of negotiating, I think. 
Yeah, you know, there's always going to be a little, a, a lot of concern, especially when you, you make such a huge change in the way people uh, get around. I mean, you know, in large cities we have buses and we have trains, but, you know, if, if these cars, it, but it, like L.A., L.A. is going to be the real test center. That's where people drive. People love to drive. They have a subway in L.A. Most people don't know it. Um, and and if, if these cars take off there, then it, that's going that's that's going to be a huge victory for autonomous vehicles. Right. So let's move on to another story that you have up on Engadget about a GPU-based fluid simulation that reacts when you click and drag your mouse. Uh, tell me a little bit about this. I wasted a lot of time with it this afternoon, but I don't really have any idea how it works. So it's, 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 it's as you're moving. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, I can't even talk because I'm looking at it right now. Mesmerized. Well, this, this, this gentleman, he decided he wanted to do this test. And, you know, it's it's these particles. And as you're moving, it's it's like when you, let's say, when you uh, have a little bit of oil in some water and you, you have a spoon or something, you move it around. It's that sort of, uh, of creation. And it's, it's, you can't, once you start, you can't stop doing it. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't, I, I should look away from the screen right now because I'm, <laughs> so mesmerized by this you thing can. and it's you know it's it's fun it's a fun little deterrent but it's also you know it just shows you uh whoa it just shows you <laughs> <laughs> it's Friday. It just shows the power of, you know the the, the gpus that are, that are in your computers now and you know what's possible and what's possible actually within your browser uh, i mean it's amazing to think that you can have all these particles uh, uh move in real time to your your mouse and, and, and create this, this, this mesmerizing, uh, I guess, piece of artwork or, you know, it's just it's really just vector based numbers. But still, I mean, look at it. Look at it. <laughs> it's very cool. It was created by George Corney. Uh, and you can look at the code at GitHub. And he says also he's bold, building a mobile app. I don't know if you put your email address in to be notified about that, but I did. For sure. Yeah, yeah, it'll be. Yeah, that, that's. This is going to be what you're going to be doing in your autonomous car is just playing with this. <laughs> exactly. And then once he has it tied into your accelerometer, as you turn, it'll turn, and then that'll be the end of it. You, right. People, people will never look up from phones then. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, you can get the link, of course, at uh, Roberto's article on Engadget. Okay, now I want to talk about beta breakers. We're both running um, on Sunday. This has nothing to do with technology. Running. But... <laughs> That's all I'm doing. Running. <laughs> I'm going to be running. So as we decided before the show, I will beat you. Um, but <laughs> you are also, I wanted to mention, because you're uh, raising money for a great charity called Project Night Night, um, that I've been following them for a while. They uh, give um, stuffed animals and blankets to uh, kids um, who need them, um, just like those essential comforts. So why don't you tell us a little bit about why you chose this? So um, I actually was, uh, I grew up poor. So at one holiday season, uh, a local charity brought us food and presents and something we wouldn't have had otherwise. We, you know, our, you know, my parents did the best they could. They both had jobs, but you know, sometimes that's that's not enough. Um, and so that really resonated with, that stayed with me for a very long time, the fact that there was people out there who cared enough, who were complete strangers to to make, uh, you know, the holidays for my, my mom and my dad and myself and my sister and brother a little bit brighter by just, you know, just noting in a few little things. And it wasn't a lot, but it was enough to make, you know, a huge impression on me. So, you know, uh, Project Night Night, they're doing the same thing with, with homeless kids. And when, you know, when Things are, you know, tough for parents. You know, it's it's heartbreaking when you can't give everything you want to your children. And if you can get some help somewhere, you know, it, that's that's outstanding. If and if there's a, uh, you know, this group is going to to to, to allow that or, or to to make that happen, then I'm more than happy to give them as much money as I can and to run until my feet hurt, which would probably be about three quarters of a mile, uh, to help them out. Yeah, the whole race is, of course, over seven miles. It's run from the the bay to the ocean. Um, so uh, you are raising money through Everyday Hero, and um, people can get the link at your Twitter account at Strange Ways. Yeah. That's Strange Ways yeah. with no vowels. Yes. Um, because you hate homelessness and vowels, apparently. I hate homelessness and vowels. <laughs> I love my cat. Look at him. Look at his little hat. <laughs> Uh, I know some of the people who donated to you already have, are asking you to um, live blog the run or maybe meerkat it, periscope it. I think uh, right now the plan is I'll probably be tweeting because I tweet nonstop anyway. But I think every mile at every mile marker, I'm going to make a little vine about how I feel. <laughs> so the first one's going to be like, come on, I'm OK. But about uh, mile five, it'll just be me crying. And by, by mile, at the end, at, at Ocean Beach, I'll just be lying on the sand. <laughs> Well, I will certainly be following that on my Apple Watch. So thank you. Because you'll be done. You'll be done. I'll be by done. Yes. You've got like hours before I get there. 
<laughs> Thank you so much, Roberto. Roberto Baldwin is the senior editor at Engadget. And of Thank course, you. you can follow him at Strange Ways. Thank you so much for coming, Roberto. Thanks for having me on. Good luck on Sunday. You too. You're going to win. <laughs> Take care. Coming up, how to get your PC ready for Oculus Rift and Pandora loses a key battle against the music industry. But first, many of you use Dropbox. We do too. And at Twit, we use it to sync and share files, everything from sharing audio MP3s, large graphic files, invoices, and program schedules. Over people in over 4 million businesses throughout the world use Dropbox. You can grow your business at using Dropbox for business. It's the better way to manage accounts, manage billing, and have visibility and control over your data. Dropbox for business lets you do that, and you don't have to waste time finding a different solution. It's the same easy Dropbox experience your employees already love and trust, which means less training and more productivity. Simple storage and sharing for any type of file on any platform and any device. Dropbox for Business never runs out of space. Each user starts off with one terabyte. I did some math on my own today, and when I say math, I mean Google searching. But what I learned is that one terabyte is about 2 million photos, or about 40 days worth of video, or 15,000 CD-ROMs. In other words, it's a lot. Dropbox for Business also integrates with third-party security and administration solutions, and the infrastructure uses encryption for file data in transit and at rest, plus segmentation and hashing to anonymize files. Extra security features are available like single sign-on and two-step verification. Want to give it a try? Sign up for Dropbox for Business. You can get a free 14-day trial just because you're a fan of Twit. Visit dropbox.com slash twit for a free 14-day trial of Dropbox for Business. That's dropbox.com slash twit. And remember, when you support our sponsors, you are supporting us. Now, on to a few more stories we're following today. A few months ago, some reporters misquoted a Microsoft representative and said that, told the world that Satya Nadella was not only embracing iOS, Android, and Linux, but also embracing the software pirates. The following day, Microsoft said that only genuine users would be eligible for the upgrade. But the story has yet to die. Today, Mary J. Foley of ZDNet reports that Microsoft is still attempting to clarify its stance on the issue and stated in the Windows blog that only genuine Windows 7 and genuine Windows 8.1 customers will be able to upgrade to Windows 10 for free. But once you do upgrade, you'll continue to receive ongoing Windows innovation and security updates for free for the supported lifetime of that device. So buy our software, please. In other Microsoft news, Candy Crush Saga will come pre-installed with Windows 10, so it will definitely be worth it to you pirates to get the real thing. We've got a few pieces of Oculus Rift news today. Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg is the owner of the virtual reality company Oculus, who are building the Rift. And in a town meeting yesterday, Zuckerberg said that future iterations of Oculus Rift will look more like glasses and less like goggles. He's not talking about the version of Oculus Rift that's expected in the first quarter of 2016. Those will still look like really nerdy goggles. In other Oculus news, the company posted the specs required for the Rift. You'll need a pretty high-end machine running Windows 7 or higher, and an NVIDIA GTX 970 or an AMD 290 equivalent or greater, and an Intel i5 or 4590 equivalent or greater, 8 gigabytes or more of RAM, a compatible HDMI 1.3 video output, and two USB 3.0 ports. The results of the case of the songwriters group Broadcast Music Incorporated versus music streaming service Pandora aren't public yet, but Ars Technica reports that BMI has won their two-year battle, and Pandora is now required to pay 2.5% copyright royalty rate. That's up from 1.7%. 5% rate that they were paying before. Pandora says the fight is not over yet. And finally, Mashable reports that a new Iron Man themed Galaxy 6S Edge is on its way. Although what it's meant to avenge, I am not sure. We also don't know anything about the phone except that it's going to be red. Mashable does link to a site that appears to show design mockups of the whole Avenger line of Galaxy S6 phones including the bronze Black Widow edition to match her hair. Responding to Samsung's t teaser tweet about the phone, one wise commenter points out, yep, there they are. <laughs> one wise commenter points out that Robert Downey Jr. himself uses an HTC phone, at least to take his bathroom selfies. That's it for this edition of Tech News tonight. Now that you have seen me do the news, I'd love to see you enjoying the show. So send us your selfies watching the show. Here is today's TN2 Selfie of the Day. 
That's Dwight Sperry, who sent in this photo of him on set with me. He said, thank you for the chance to see the show live. This is truly the best way to watch TN2. Dwight came into the Petaluma studio here, and we had a great time catching up. And we have a studio audience tonight, and I'm grateful for them. So you can come in and see us, too. And tag your pictures with hashtag TN2Selfie on Twitter, Google+, Instagram, or via email to TN2 at twit.tv or to me directly at Megan at twit.tv and tell us a little bit about yourself. You may be selected as the TN2 selfie of the day. You can also subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write to us at TN2 at twit.tv and watch live every weekday in the privacy of your own home if you'd like at 4 p.m. Pacific. Don't miss our morning news program, Tech News, today every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Megan Maroney. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by CashFly.com.